G'day everyone, my name's Matt and welcome back to the fourth in a series of videos talking all about fire and fire behaviour. Um, now in today's video we're going to be talking about Bruce Springsteen and how when he sung this... You can't start a fire, you can't start a fire without a spark. He was actually a little way off the mark because yeah, you can start a fire with a spark, um, but it's certainly not the only way of creating one because there's also spontaneous combustion, which is a really common way that fires are created. And especially when we're talking about structure fires and these kinds of things, um, it's actually a really important component about understanding fire behavior and actually predicting its growth and um, figuring out what's gonna be happening next and actually how we can better fight it. So in today's video, we're gonna be having a bit of a look at spontaneous combustion and how it actually happens and the different ways that we can actually achieve it. Now to do that, we can't do that in here because it's gonna create a lot of heat and smoke and everything else. Um, and I don't particularly wanna do that in this small room. So we're gonna to need to go to a place where we can quite safely create a lot of uh, smoke and flame. So you'll need to, um, yeah, you'll need to just come with me. All right, so now we have a much bigger space. We can actually go ahead and burn some stuff without smoking ourselves out. And so what we're gonna do is have a bit of a look at spontaneous combustion so that we can actually understand that it's a really important part when you're talking about fire behavior. For our first example, we're gonna be mixing these two different chemicals together. And this will produce what's called an exothermic reaction, which means it is producing heat. And we're gonna go ahead and call these chemical A and chemical B. Um, so firstly, what I need to do is put some chemical B on our little table here and then I'm going to inject it with some chemical A. And once I've done this, what's going to happen is the two are going to start combining in a uh, exothermic reaction, and they're going to start producing more and more heat. And you can see already that it's starting to produce um, some smoke, and that's becoming more and more rapid as the, uh, the, as the reaction takes place. And eventually they're going to reach what's called an auto ignition temperature when the uh, reaction and the chemicals reach a uh, temperature at which they will simply burst into flames. And for our second example, we're going to light this match with the candle below it. And while this might not seem like much, it's actually quite a good representation of what's happening in a flashover. And that's because if we think about the match as the fuel that's in the building, for instance, the tables and chairs and couches and beds and all these kinds of things that we find in a normal uh, house fire. And if we think about the, uh, the candle as our heat source, which is the, uh, the really hot uh, smoke and particles, particles of uh, combustion that we find above the neutral plane, what we actually see is our heat source heating up our fuels um, and then they will start to pyrolysize and continue to create uh, lots of pyrolysis gases until the point they reach their auto ignition temperature. And once they finally do, assuming there's enough uh, oxygen available, they will then um, spontaneously combust and burst into flames. And this is exactly what's happening inside a structure fire with a flashover. The, uh, the smoke layer actually builds up more and more heat until all the fuels in the room start to pyrolysize and give off flammable smoke. And this will continue until either they uh, run out of air and the fire um, starts to die back. Or in what happens in most cases is the, uh, the fire actually continues to build until all of those fuels actually reach their auto ignition temperature around about the same time. It's a transitional period, not just a bang. But they'll reach it around about the same time and then pretty well all of the combustibles in that room will burst into flames. All right, so now we've seen that um, a spark is definitely not the only way that we can create a fire. Spontaneous combustion is a uh, very common and um, easy way of creating fire. And all it requires is that the heat, fuel and oxygen to form our fire triangle are in the right proportion so that we can get that chemical reaction um, happening. Um, now this can happen in different ways by the addition of heat to our, uh, our fuels from an existing fire or it can be just purely through a chemical reaction between a few different substances as we've, uh, as we've demonstrated. Um, now that's it for this one. Thanks very much for watching and um, I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.